Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a really good fun tutorial for you guys. My girl is only 17. She literally is young in school, doesn't have money to get her hair done every six weeks to like three months. So she needs something more low maintenance. We started her journey a session back and she had a lot of old box dye that was growing out. She cut as much of it off as possible. She has like a bob length hair. And now we're about to take it into another session, but we still want to keep as much dimension as possible and a lot of depth. So I'm not going to pack these highlights in back to back. They're going to be baby lights with a little bit more space in between them with a bigger subsection than normal. And we're also going to implement a low light that she doesn't necessarily need, but that will also play a role and I'll explain it in the video. But this will be the best way to get somebody to a nice, beautiful bronze, but it's low maintenance where they can come once a year and they don't have to worry about getting their hair done all the time, and it looks like it's growing out of their head. If you want to watch this, since the lived in looks are taking over right now, then keep watching. Don't forget to give a big fat thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And yeah, let's keep watching. So yeah, I love you guys. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a really good video for you guys. This is my underage client, Haley. She's 17 years old. I've been doing her hair for a better half of six months to seven months now. This is our second or third session. Can't quite remember exactly at the moment, but she had old permanent color in the middle of the mid area, which gave us a band. And we've been knocking through it slowly but surely. And we want to give her a lived in look, but still keep it low maintenance. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks. First and foremost, we will be using Finola's No Yellow Lightning Powder. This gets up to about eight, nine levels of a lift. Very good lightener. Been loving it. Been playing with it a lot lately. You guys know I love Finola lighteners and I love my Blonde Me by Schwarzkopf. This stuff is good. Get your hands on it. Links down below in the bio. You can get 10% off your entire order by using my Finola code. It's B-R-E-T-T-10. -T Make sure you use it and take advantage. Now, I know you're probably thinking, why am I mixing up a low light? Because we want to get her lighter, right? But we also want to keep her lived in looking. So even underneath, we didn't do a full last time on her hair. So she has a lot of depth in there. But even where there's darker hair, that's like a level five. I'm going in with the 5N Reckon Shades EQ, just the 5N by itself with 10 volume. And I'm going to place a low light everywhere I want to place it. And even if it's not lighter and it's darker than the actual 5N, I'm still going to place it there because that will keep dimension in there on top of what I already am leaving out. So I am going to be packing these a little bit more spaced out. You guys usually see me pack them back to back to back. And I'm not doing that today. Only around the hairline right now where I'm working on that detailed hairline. Rules I have for the hairline, I always do either baby lights or baby slices. And I always pack them back to back to back. Minimal subsections where there's literally hairs that you can count in between each foil. This is what I'll be doing on the hairline today like always. But when I get to the rest of the hair is where we'll start to do things a little bit different than normal.
So I'm continuing to pack these baby lights in, but not as tight as I normally would. You guys always see me do them very, very tight. You can see I'm leaving a bigger subsection in between. Um, funny thing is, I know in school they teach us when you do your subsection, you slice off your piece that you're going to use and then you slice it again so you can weave off the top of it. And I do that sometimes if it's a lot of dimension in between, but with this, it's a little bit more than normal, but it's not a a huge amount so I basically stitch my weave right off the top of the skim of it so it's still a bigger subsection than I normally would use and this will leave in a lot more dimension than it normally would for my clients um, doing this low light the 5n only going in between every now and then when I feel like so is going to make sure we keep a lot of other dimension in there besides the subsections because the subsections are going to still be that little bit of brandy warm brassy color so by putting this 5n in there it's going to cool it down just a wee bit and add more variety if you guys are og brett ryan supporters and been following me since the beginning of my youtube journey and my career then you would know that my baby lights are always very finely stitched i do them very very fine where they almost look like slices and if you paid attention today you would notice that when i'm doing everywhere except for the hairline I'm actually doing a baby light still, but it's more of a defined stitch. So there's different ways to do baby lights. People do them all kinds of different ways. As long as the baby light is close together stitched, it's considered a baby light and a thin section. But mine, I'm always doing them, um, I can't really explain how I foil it. It's almost like spinning the comb and it keeps them very, very close together where it's almost barely noticeable as a stitch. And that always gives us a really, really nice baby light that looks like it's growing out of the head. But I did play today and I added a little bit thicker of a stitch than I normally would. But it's still considered a baby light. But you can see it's actually that more traditional baby light that most artists do. Mine's not the typical every day that you see baby light. So I've been playing with different baby lights lately. And I did this because I'm doing bigger subsections. I still wanted to see different variety throughout the hair and felt like this would add to it. So now we let her process for 60 minutes. She is now processed and you can still see all the way through the hair, a lot of warmth. It lifts beautifully at the root area, but then we get that bandable permanent color. So I'm going in and I'm using Joyco Lumashine. This used to be my holy grail root toning and low lighting go-to by Joyco. And it's liquid demi permanent. And it's a little bit more opaque than Shades EQ. And that's why I opted to go with this today because I wanted to give her more of a rooted look. So what I'm doing is I'm using 4N, 5N, A. Equal parts, Joyco runs a little bit warmer, unlike Shades EQ. And we're just going to root shadow her everywhere. And then I'll let you know what we do after that. Saw you paint a picture of a face. 
After I applied her root shadow and let it sit for about 10 minutes, I then mixed up her global toner. I used AN, 8VB, 8GI, 8WG, 9M, 9P, 7M. The 9M and the 7M equal an AM, and I did five grams of each, one to one equal parts of developer with the color, and you guys, it came out Gorgeous. Look how beautiful that is. This is a beautiful lived in rooted color that's great for somebody 17 years old that can't get their hair done all the time. They don't have money for it all the time. This is a perfect color. It matches well with her skin complexion and she's still bright enough. I feel like it doesn't do it justice. Lighter than before, we still made a lot of progress from that old permanent color box eye, but it still looks nice and lived in. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below what you want to see for the next video. I love you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. As always, so long for now.